What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and we're at Micro Center here in Tustin, California. As you guys know, is our local store. Um, today, I well, last time we were here, I talked about the fact that I wanted to kind of change up my monitor setup at work and at home. And I sort of showed you guys what I wanted to do with that. Before we get over there and kind of show you again, if you've missed that video and get it back to my studio and set up, I wanted to show you the monitor section because I feel like this area of people's setups and builds don't get enough love. And if there's any place in the world you could possibly go to see how every monitor looks next to each other, it's gonna be Micro Center. The ViewSonic X24K LED projector is the world's first projector designed for Xbox consoles. Featuring screen sizes up to 120 inches, native refresh rates up to 240 hertz, built-in Harman Kardon speakers, and low latency gaming modes, the X24K gaming projector from ViewSonic delivers a truly customizable experience for both gaming and HDR cinema. To see our full-length video covering features and user experiences, follow the links in the description below. So the cool thing about the store here in Tustin, this is a modernized store. What I mean by that is it has changed, like where I'm standing right now used to be the original like build your own and where the pre-builts and stuff were, but it's all been redesigned and remodeled. So a lot of the store designs might be a bit different, but the more modern stores will be like this, where they have every single monitor like SKU that they sell out on display. And then it's also like separated by brand. So for instance, over here at the very, very end of this kiosk, we've got the Alienware end cap, which has not just their monitors, but their desktops there. Um, over here, we got Dell. Now, a lot of people don't know Dell actually sells monitors. They're, I remember the Dell Ultra Sharps were one of the very first like professional grade monitors you could get for like video editing and, and Photoshop and stuff. They got the Asus wall over here. So everything from the Asus lineup to the ROG lineup. Remember ROG is technically a different brand with Asus. So they're all on display. Um, this is the PG42UQ. Uh, we had this monitor actually. Actually, no, this is different. This one's very thin. See, this is what's nice about this is you can come over here and kind of like touch and feel and look at these monitors. Now, the only downside is the fact that they're all sharing a split signal, as you can see. So that sometimes can degrade some of the quality, um, but at least gives you an idea of what its size looks like, what its base is like, um, just how it looks in person. They're all gonna be in like a display mode, which is usually like super dynamic, very bright, poppy colors and contrast and stuff. Um, but it's better than just kind of looking at it in the box, right? So we've got curved monitors. This is the one that we used to have right here. This is the PG38UQ. No, I had the 42UQ, but this one's like way fatter than the other one. So you can see that, right? From the front in like an image, you can't tell, but from the side, you can see how much fatter this monitor is versus the other one. So let's take a look at uh, the other side. I'm curious what the LG panels have on display because the panel I'm looking at for work and home now is actually an LG panel, but it bridges the gap between TV and monitor, which I think is starting to become blurry these days in terms of that crossover tech, making it so that you can have larger format screens without all of the compromises you have to make with a TV. So let's look over here. So you can see all the LG monitors are on display. Um, obviously your G-Sync monitors, your FreeSync monitors, they're probably mostly gonna be FreeSync. LG tends to really kind of lean into FreeSync more than G-Sync. I mean, although a lot of FreeSync panels these days are validated for G-Sync, um, but whether or not it's official, right? Cause that's an Nvidia owned thing or whatever. Um, uh oh, their McAfee has expired. Another really popular brand you tend to hear about these days is Acer. Uh, Acer's been around for a long, long time, not just with de desktops, but obviously with panels. So it's just nice to be able to see everything um, on display. Now, yeah, like I said, when it comes to the quality of what you're viewing, obviously with their split signal like this and all of them being in kind of like their store mode or super bright dynamic modes, it's not gonna give you the best representation of what the panel looks like, but you can see things like off viewing access, like whether or not it's gonna start to invert colors or you know, that's more of a TN thing. Most of these panels these days are all IPS or even VA. Um, VA is kind of bridges the gap between TN and IPS, but IPS cost has come down so much now, almost even cheap panels these days tend to be IPS. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea of maybe this uh, curve is a little bit too much for you. Is a thousand R curve too much? Is a 700 R curve just right? That maybe you decide you thought you wanted a curved panel and now you don't just by looking at it. So the nice thing about having all this stuff on display is the fact that you're not just guessing by looking at an image, you are actually looking at it yourself. Speaking of looking at it, let's go look at what I got my eyes on, my thousand R curved eyes. So the audio video aisles here at Micro Center, they may not be like Magnolia Centers at Best Buy and stuff, but they have a pretty good selection of different types of TVs. So this is a LG OLED Evo C3. Um, this is, what is the size? This is probably like an 85 inch or 86 inch, something like that. Or that says 77. 
That could be a 77, it might be an 83. It's hard to tell in the big open store, right? But again, everything's on display, so you at least get an idea of what it looks like. Um, you get an idea of its thickness, which I think is really important when it comes to TV shopping, right? Because you could rotate the TV a little bit and you can actually see now the depth. You can see the layout of the input for like the HDMIs uh, or even an output for like arc channel or whatever and see like how close can you get it mounted to your wall? Are you gonna have any sort of issues with trying to put a, a TV or a vase mount on or a TV mount or vase mount on this and get it mounted up where you need it to? I've actually had quite a few TVs cause me a problem in the past because I wasn't paying attention to where the cable inputs and outputs and stuff were and were interfering with like different mounts I had. So it's kind of nice to be able to see that. Speaking of mounts, as you can see, if you need a wall mount for a monitor, a TV, a flex mount, it doesn't matter. They've got full motion mounts the whole deal. Oh, and they're on display right here. I didn't even realize this. So you can actually see the mounts on display, which is kind of nice. I think these are the kinds of things that most people forget about with their setups, especially if you're building a game room or something, it's probably gonna be a TV in there. But here's what I'm looking at. This is the LG 42 LX3Q 42 inch class OLED. It's a 4K HD smart LED TV. It's an OLED, even though it says LED, it's OLED. But um, it's basically, it's kind of like built upon the flex panel that we've seen on LG's gaming panels and even the Corsair Xenion, which is an LG panel as well. The difference with this is actually 4K. So I've been using the Corsair uh, Xenion Flex for a while, ever since it came out. In fact, mine's an engineering sample, so it's got a little bit of quirks with it because it's not a full retail sample. But mine's an ultra wide, not a 16 by nine. And for resolution sake, I kind of want to go back to 16 by nine. Um, it is curved just slightly. I don't know what the arc rating on the curve is. It doesn't really say. I forgot this one is adjustable. It doesn't have the pop out handles. This is the motorized one. But uh, the fact that I can have both, the best of both worlds and with it being 4K, the text will be sharp. The problem with having the 1440p ultra wide 42 inch, I think it's 42 inch that I have now, is that 1440p, the text starts to look a little blocky. So I'm looking forward to getting the OLED depth of color as well as the, uh, the sharpness to go along with it. It is extremely pricey though at uh, two grand. It's <laughs> extremely pricey at two grand. However, this is going to replace, um, at home anyway, this is gonna replace the sound bar and such that I'm trying to get rid of uh, because it has built-in speakers here. The downside with it, all the electronics and guts of the TV are in a separate base, whereas the panel is just the panel and it's got wiring built in through the mechanism to, con to control the panel. So that means you can't like wall mount it, base mount it or anything like that. It has to use its base and be on the stand. Um, in terms of inputs and outputs though, if we look, we've got multiple um, HDMI on here. One, two, three, four HDMI. So I'm gonna have to make sure I have a high-speed HDMI cable. I'll probably pick one up while I'm here just to make sure I have the right one because running 4K up to, what is it, 120 hertz needs a high-speed HDMI. Like DisplayPort would be best, but because it's technically a TV, HDMI is already really gonna find on it. But because of the fact that they have so many of the built-in gaming features and functions now with all of the high-end processors in the TVs now, you don't have the input lag and latency. You have gaming modes, which actually turn off a lot of the post-processing stuff that built into a TV to get rid of any sort of that input lag. Um, and I, it's just kind of right now, the only way you can get larger than say a 32 inch TV or an or monitor or an ultra wide monitor is you have to go TV. So stuff like this exists to sort of bridge the gap, which really makes it good uh, for both worlds. But at this price though, this is where people immediately are gonna be like, that's ridiculous. And that's why I'm gonna use it now to see whether or not it truly is ridiculous. The downside is I want two of them because I want one for home. And because the base and everything's attached to it, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit two of these boxes in my car because we have three people in the car and I can't fold the seats down in the back. Damn, I wish I had my roof rack on the car now. <laughs> Can you imagine this all strapped down on the roof? Okay, so I grabbed the flex. We're gonna take this to the car, see if I can even fit two of them. If I can, I'll grab two of the flexes. I think a lot of people are familiar with the C3. The flex is really designed as a gaming TV. So I'm really excited to see how this does, considering the fact that, you know, uh, Jeremy here at the store was telling me like a lot of people don't even come look at it for the use of gaming. So that's why I'm really excited to try it out. Is it a product that LG should have never made? Or is it, literally like an unsung hero that people don't even consider because the price itself is so high and ridiculous. Like I, this has to be dual purpose. Like I think people using this would have to be using it as a TV as well. Having maybe a console hooked up to it, having your, your set top box hooked up to it, your computer, literally being one thing to, to provide for everything. It's two grand is a lot of money though. We may not even fit one. <laughs> 
Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought the truck. <laughs> well, maybe through a little bit of uh, creative Tetrising and maybe some unsafe people riding on the roof of a car on the freeway in Southern California. Uh, shout out if you saw that and honked at us. Uh, we didn't really do that, so don't think that. Anyway, we got it back to the studio. So here it is. Uh, we're gonna kind of do a quick unboxing and then we're gonna Talk about why maybe people aren't buying this panel. Like, honestly, this panel is, is neat, but uh, it's very unpopular in the sense of sales numbers. So let's just kind of get through the unboxing. It's like suction cupping itself. Suction cupping. Cupping suctioning. Okay. Basically gonna have all the same crap like you would expect with the TV. So you've got your remote control, in that bag, you've got your, um, the power cord is actually built into the panel. It doesn't unplug. You've got these two panels, which I'm not entirely sure what they're for yet. They're little plastic covers. Haven't figured that out yet. We'll take a look at a, in a sec. Um, remember, this is not able to be VESA mounted or anything, so I'm not too sure what these are for. But there they are. <laughs> so I got two of those. I made a comment to LG a long time ago. And again, it's important to note, this is not LG sponsored in any way. Um, Micro Center sponsored this video. But I made a comment to LG a long time ago. I'm like, you guys should make OLED TVs that have all the specs and stuff we ex want out of a monitor. And they were like, oh no, 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 we probably would never do that. Sure guys. Anyway, um, so as you can see, it's fully assembled already. Nothing to put together, no vase amount because of the fact that the base and everything is part of the thing. It doesn't come apart, right? So here's the power cable. As you can see, it's like hardwired into the TV, just dangling out. Um, oh, I guess those panels maybe go right here. Yeah, they go there to cover any of the cables. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's get it out of here. Um, I've already showed you guys the connectivity and stuff. Oh, something else that it also includes uh, in that little package over there is IR sensor extension cables so that you can uh, actually put the IR sensor somewhere else if you want. Maybe under the desk or something. So if you want to work the remote from somewhere else, I'm, I'm not sure why, but here it is right here. So it's the IR extender cable, which is kind of neat, I guess, if you need it. And then it's just got a USB A to USB A. <laughs> we should hook two USBs to itself. I wonder what would happen if we did that. <laughs> charge it, charge it. <laughs> That's just because it, there is a USB hub kind of built into this sort of. Um, all right, let's get it out of the box. Okay, um, so obviously there's no swivel on this at all, and you do get a few degrees of tilt adjustment, like maybe 10 down and five up at the best, not much. And if you take a look at the back, you can see it has these, this wire channel built in. They do give you extras of these little plastic covers, one that can go there, one that can go here. Um, that way, if you are running an coaxial to this for whatever reason, maybe from a set top box or something. Has a LAN port for wired LAN. It also has wireless built in. And then we've obviously got our four HDMI's as you can see right here. One of them is an arc channel. So if it's hooked up to a uh, receiver or something, you can send the, cause it does have web OS built in, which is nice because if you're gonna use Netflix or Hulu, any of that sort of stuff, Apple TV, then if this one even has Apple TV. Some of the LG panel TVs don't have Apple TV and some do, it's really weird. And some have HBO Max and some don't, it's really weird. Or just Max now they call it. Um, and obviously we have our USB hub right here as I mentioned, and then we have two USB ins. So this would just be for like playing media or whatever as a USB in device. So there's that, there's nothing entirely too crazy about it. Oh, also to this right here, these are LED strips. So these light up and they give you some functions to be able to connect them, well not connect, but just have it respond to the colors happening on the screen, kind of like those immersive LEDs like you'd find on big picture panels on the wall. Um, kind of hard to see and how far away it is and how big the screen is. Uh, anyway, you can also make it react to sound or you can just give it a kind of a rainbow color or pick an ambient color that goes with your setup. Um, but it does have a little bit of indirect backlighting uh, designed to bounce off the wall. Let's go see what it looks like on an actual desk. All right, so here it is on my desk. This is what replaced my, I think it was a 42 inch also, 42 inch Corsair Xenion Flex ultra wide. My biggest complaint about that, as I've already said, is that is a 1440p ultra wide panel where the text starts to look really blocky at that, res at that screen size. Obviously with this being 4K, that isn't the case. But because it is technically a TV, 
Um, you can see we have all the WebOS functions we would expect because I have a lot of LG TVs at home. I love WebOS. I hate Android TV. So I, I'm not a fan of any of the Sony Bravia stuff because of the fact that it's all Android TV. Samsung, I have long standing beef with for other reasons in terms of just panel quality and some bad repairs I had in the past. So I become a little bit of an LG fanboy when it comes to their um, built-in operating system. I love WebOS. Not to mention LG gives you all the free channels and stuff that come along with it. Again, I know this sounds like an LG sponsored video. It's not. Um, it's just something I'm very familiar and comfortable with. Hey, Starship Troopers, arguably one of the best movies ever made. Speaking of which, there's a really new, really cool new game out that very much mimics that. I forget what it's called. Helldivers. Helldivers 2. Were there a first Helldivers? Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe it was just a meme. The second one was the first one, but whatever. Uh, so you got all your apps and stuff. Hey, it does have Macs, as you can see right there. Of course, it's got the Magic Remote, so it can, you know, you can use like a Wii Remote. This is also where that extra um, sensor comes in handy if, if you want to use that. Um, let's talk about the flex aspect of it. Right now I have it set to 35 degrees of flex. Now the cool thing is that you can do it with buttons on the screen, or we can just go over here to, oh, and also to multi-view. This is kind of handy, like if you're playing a video game or something like on um, console or PC or whatever, but maybe there's a sports game on you want to watch at the same time, and this is like your dorm room panel or something. I think it makes like a great dorm room panel. Not the great price for that, but it makes a good panel that's like one thing you can have consoles and PCs and set top boxes or dish, dish direct TV, whatever plugged into it. So you could have like a picture in picture going where you can have like a game up and by game, I mean like football game, hockey game, soccer game, whatever, or football, right? And then still playing your game and keep an eye on what's happening at the same time. So multi-view is kind of nice. Um, game optimizer does exactly what you would expect. This is where it, it adjusts settings to give you optimized like shadow um, brightness. So you could see people hiding in the shadows. It gives you a better latency optimization. You have standard and ultra. Um, so if you're playing Twitch games where reaction time is very important, like Rocket League or Counter-Strike or any sort of game where sh you know shooting and response time is very important, that's gonna be nice. The problem with Game Optimizer though is if you put it in Game Optimizer mode, it goes really dim on the brightness because of the fact that it kind of like defaults to power energy saving mode. And one of the reasons for that is OLEDs, because the pixel itself is turning off, there is a time for that pixel to turn on and off and change colors and such. So the dimmer the panel is, the faster it can respond. Um, you can go into the OLED care settings and actually turn off the power optimization or the energy optimization uh, or energy saver mode, by, I should say, and then you can adjust the OLED brightness in the, in the game optimizer. So you can kind of fine tune that to brightness versus response time. I haven't noticed an issue by going game optimizer, turning off the efficiency mode and pumping the OLED brightness to its max, which is 100. Um, and I didn't really notice any sort of response time issues. Going into the non-game optimized modes like Vivid or Standard or Cinema or any of those, there was a noticeable amount of input lag, only a couple of frames, but on a game like Rocket League, a couple of frames could actually be a pretty big differential between what's reality and what you're seeing when you're seeing it. So just going to point that out. Anyway, moving on to the, um, where is it here? All settings, I wanna show you guys the curvature stuff. Cause one of the things that's neat, it's essentially the same panel technology as what's in the Xenion Flex. The difference is it's 4K, like I've said, it's 16 by nine, it's not um, ultra wide, but this is a motorized flex screen. Whereas the Corsair, you kind of have to go through the awkwardness of like, ooh, I hate that sound. Okay, this does it motorized for you. Just gonna bring up uh, the different modes right here. So we have standard, which is flat, curvature mode one, which is off. I'm not sure what that means. I sort of played around with some of these, but here's our user mode of 35%. Um, what does that do? Our hamburger. Okay, so it just brings up the button there. So now, as you see, I can just move this little thing over the little dot, and change the curve to however I want it. What's funny is zero, because I've looked at a flex screen for so long now, at home, our curve screen at home and here at work, to where zero or flat looks domed. It almost looks like the corners are going away from you. I've gotten so used to seeing it uh, like in my face, but whatever. Here you can just go by 5% increments and kind of set it to where you want it. I find 35 is perfect for me, but you can see 5% increments on the curvature all the way up to 100. 100 to me, oh, it's like reflecting the sound back at me all weird now. It's like when you talk into a dish and it's like, hello, you know, it's like, Weird, I don't like that. It's one of the reasons why I hated the G9 from Samsung. Too much curve. You can also drag that. That's so cool. Just to think that I have a motorized panel. <laughs> it's so weird. It's also one of the reasons why it's so expensive, to be honest. I think if it were a manual, it would be like probably five to hundred to maybe even a thousand dollars less, to one of the truth. 
But how is it with gaming? That's... That's so sick for gaming. HDR mode is off by... This is a HDR panel, but I have HDR off on Windows, so of course it's gonna be off in the game as well. Oh yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Do you know why I'm doing this? Because I did an LG video where they were like, please remove the part of shoosting the people. Ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 the <bu> ah! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a lot of cops. No! So yeah, the monitor looks good. Okay, so anyway, there you go. I just wanted to make a video about the LG, the OG LED. The LG OLED, the 42 inch flex. I forgot the actual model number. We can put it on the screen right here. Um, yeah, it was it was time for a change, and I've been using exclusively ultra wide. I've been using exclusively ultra wide for all my panels now for years. And I wanted to go back to a 16 by 9 4K 120 hertz, but I wanted something bigger than like 32 inch panels that you could get. So the 42 inch seemed like the logical stopgap between going with a big TV, which honestly is what this is. It's just a C3 OLED panel. Let me turn that down. It's just a C a C3 OLED panel shrunk down to 42 inches. Uh, which is ironic because it costs more than the big C3 TV <laughs> just because of the motorized functionality and stuff. I feel like uh, LG was onto something here, but man, did they really, really, really overprice it. Um, that, I think the motorized flex is what's costing it the most, uh, honestly. So I, I don't know how many people would be interested in this. I can say that if you go up and look online and, and talk to some of the feedback from people that sell them, they say they really don't move. Like these have been sitting for years, or not years, but months and months or whatever without moving. Apparently the previous model, because this is like a refresh, um, those didn't even move. They ended up getting sent back or whatever. So I was like, I want to try it. I want to see what it's all about. So if you guys want to see maybe a long-term report on how it's been, on whether or not I'm going to keep using it, um, like this video and comment down below that you'd like to hear like maybe a six month or even a one year review, how the OLED's kept up. Uh, Cause one of the problems with OLED and its early stages of life was the fact that burn-in was a real problem. You know, network logos down in the, like this right here, right? If you're playing this game for hours and hours and hours, this would be a problem. This would eventually like burn in on the screen. Uh, but it has all kinds of burn-in protection that's really not been a thing now in a long time with pixel shift and pixel sweep that happens every time you turn the TV on and off. It does a really good job at also repairing any sort of burn-in. Um, not something that's been a problem for quite a while now. Anyway, I've talked long enough about this now. I'm just going to use it for a while. Um, I am going to use one at home as well and just kind of see how it goes. You know, it's been a long time since I've really kind of took a look at how my panels are and what I'm looking for in a panel. So I've kind of tried, got to experiment now and see how this goes. Anyway, huge thank you to Micro Center for supplying this monitor for us to take a look at. Don't forget Micro Center has a huge selection like we already showed of all kinds of gaming monitors as, as we've already shown, as well as their uh, professional TV area where you can look at TVs or even crossover panels like this one here to sort of bridge that gap between uh, monitor and TV. So there you go guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.